Hey everyone, welcome back to another build video and today we're going to resume with the long AC prototype. After a three week long break, I'm just so happy to get back with this project. And I think this will be uh, part four of the build series. And if you guys haven't already watched the previous parts, make sure you check them out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description and hope you guys enjoy this video and stay tuned till the end. So first things first, I've got some new plans printed out in Air Force sheets that I'm going to join together cut them, then stick them on Koro sheet, draw the outlines and cut all the individual parts. And voila. So we're going to start with the engine cover. Took me a little while to get this part designed well. And we're going to prep the part by doing some score cuts on the edges. And also cutting the lower surface of the edges and pulling the material out to get that clean surface. And we're going to repeat that to all the marked edges. After that, we're going to open up the material by cutting in between the lines. This helps us get a very good bend without the material resisting it. So now we're going to test fit it on the engine housing before we glue everything together. Since we have a clean fit, we're going to stick it on step by step. First the frontal section, then the mid section and finally the rear. I'm doing it this way as I haven't glued on a former. That's the thing that gives shape to the skin. Here I'm using the ruler just to get uniform shape. And it looks beautiful. The good thing about this design is that I can replace, upgrade or swap the motor out anytime I want. This not only saves money, but also time. On to the next part. We've got some fresh plans out of the printer. These are the parts for the canards. Speaking of which, a canard is basically an elevator control surface at the front or near the nose of the airplane. You can find it on airplanes like the Eurofighter Typhoon, the, the Dassault Rafael, and the Sukhoi 30. So first, we're gonna score cut the canard into two halves and bevel cut both sides of the leading edge to get a better aerodynamic profile and for us to be able to bend the canard into shape. We also have the spar ready. So this is the aerofoil shape for the canard. I went with a symmetrical aerofoil just so it doesn't produce too much lift near the nose. So to draw that onto the nose section, we're going to have to attach the nose as the canard is in between the nose and the fuselage. For proper alignment, I'm going to draw some reference axes. The reason why I didn't include these drawings in the primary design was because I basically designed this on a 2D software and tested that 2D design by making it into a 3D object and I knew there was going to be a lot of inaccuracies. So if I had designed everything before building it, I would have had to make a ton of changes and also give a lot more effort. Take for example the nose. This one is just longer than the initial design. So if I had already designed the canard assembly, I would have had to make more adjustments for the new nose which is just too much effort and time lost. So I'm just allowing the design to like evolve over time. After drawing the canard shape onto the fuselage and cutting it on both sides, we're gonna test it with the spa. And you can see that it's not straight and it's very floppy. It's cause the spa is very weak. But rather than redesign the spa, I'm just gonna make a single piece canard. So that means the canard which we just made are useless. So the same goes with the swept canard. Later I made new plans for both type of canards, prepped them, drew them on Koro sheet and cut them out. Then I did some bevel cutting and glued the spar on to the bottom surface and then the top surface. But before we fit it into the nose, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. So we're going to slide it into the nose and this time it's very strong and nice. And this is what it looks like taking the nose out. 
I also made a similar swept canard with the same technique but just made it in three steps. But one side of the canard ended up twisted. This is just because of gluing it improperly. So I'm gonna have to make a new one as if I use this in flight, the plane will tend to roll to one side. So yeah. So next is the fun part. We're gonna make a steerable nose wheel with some shackle probes. Fancy name for springs. For the strut, I'm going to take this rod and bend it according to the template. We're going to need some extra servo horns. I just have a ton of these lying around. And to get these to fit the rod, I heated the rod and then just pushed it through and did the same with the wheel. I'm going to cut the edges of two of the servo horns. These will act as spring holders. So the basic idea is to place a plate or in this case a PCB that attaches the suspension mechanism to the front fuselage section while these spring holders prevent the spring from moving about and the rod uh, from sliding out of the plate. So for that we're gonna have to cut the PCB to a required size and drill a hole for the rod as well as cut the rod to appropriate length. So now we're gonna start assembling it. The first part is the spring holder. So I'm gonna glue that to the rod and push it into place and give it some time to dry. Now we're gonna install the spring, but before we do that, we're gonna to have to cut the spring as it's a bit too long for our requirement. Next, let's insert the PCB. After that, we're gonna glue on the second holder. This is more of a stopper as it stops the strut from sliding out of the PCB plate. Next, we're gonna glue on a control horn that connects the servo and the strut. To get proper alignment, we're gonna mark the center of the rod to the center of the servo shaft. After which, we're gonna glue the servo onto the plate. Next, we're gonna install the control rod, but before that, I'm gonna have to change the control horn on the servo to match the one on the strut. Next, we need to connect the strut and the steering servo. For that, I'm gonna measure the length of the rod, cut it, bend it, and insert it into the horns. Now let's test it and it works well. The steering works even when the suspension is lowered, so that's good. But I did notice an issue with the steering movement. So basically whenever I try to steer, not only does it rotate and slide, but it also pivots back and forth, which is not desirable as you want the strut to be 90 degrees with the plate for the suspension and the steering to work properly. So I took it apart, cut out a top plate and cut some foam board pieces to support the plate and glued them on. Then I made new connecting rods and hooked everything up and that issue is now solved and it works perfectly. So now we're going to glue it on the fuselage and install the wheel. So now let's hook everything up and test it and both steering and the suspension work perfectly. And make a slot for the nose. After which we're going to insert the nose and voila. I just want to show you guys how well the steering and the suspension work. This is just a really simple method and I bet many of you will be able to easily make something similar. Now time for some bureau. So that's it for this week, hope you guys enjoyed it, hope this was educational as well as interesting and if so don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and comment if you have any questions. Thank you guys for watching and until next time, bye bye.